So my name is Daniel. I'm a fourth year pharmacy student here at the Uni of Nottingham. So I'm from Aberystwyth in Wales. So it's a small town in Wales by the seaside. Um, lots and lots of sheep and yeah, very like sort of small town energy. So I went to um, just a state school, quite small. It's actually like Welsh speaking. So um, now I've come to uni. I mean, I speak English at home, but um, coming to uni in Nottingham is a bit of a bigger city than where I'm from originally. Um, but then my dad's from um, the Midlands and then like my mum's from Wales. So like um, there's that balance there, hence why I don't have the Welsh accent. Um, so I did biology, chemistry and maths for A-level, um, which goes well with studying pharmacy. I feel like it's quite cliche, but maybe like doing something to help other people. So of course, studying pharmacy, that's like a big driver of the profession is like you learn quite a lot and then everything gets transferred into like how can this help a patient so I feel like even when you're learning about science the science is about a drug that a patient will then take and then you think okay I, that could like change someone's life so I think there's lots of things that I do sort of, and I feel like the overarching theme with them all is probably like that sense of like helping other people so of course like my degree I also like volunteer at a food bank so I think that's sort of another part to it. Um, I've represented the uni as a student ambassador, um, where again, you're sort of like making sure that lots of like younger students see themselves coming to uni, which maybe they wouldn't have known whether they should or not. So it's quite nice to shape that um, experience in someone else's life. I represent like pharmacy students across the UK and also like internationally, so I do quite a bit with them. Um, a few different associations there. So I think it's just trying to like give opportunities to lots of other people. Um, but I would say that's probably the main one. Very social, so quite like talking to people. I feel like that fits in very nicely with yeah, the aim to help others. I mean, I wanted to come to university. I feel like uni, as well as getting really great academic experience, you also get to meet so many different people. There's so many opportunities. For example, I ended up doing a study abroad, which is something that I wanted to do before coming to uni. So I think that it would have been a bit more difficult to do had I not come to university. So I went to the campus in Malaysia. And I think just having the sort of like global aspect to the degree was a big, big selling point for coming to uni. So I'm really happy that I was able to do that. And then I think just generally like the university lifestyle. So being able to like meet people from all across the UK, in fact, like all across the world, um, and getting to learn about something in detail that you've got a real passion for. I think that was a big driving force for coming to uni. And then of course, like employability afterwards. So studying like a vocational course like pharmacy, it's quite important that you do do a degree because you can't become a pharmacist without studying um, a master's in pharmacy. Um, and then in terms of why Uni of Nottingham, I feel like it was a really sort of like um, friendly environment when I came on the open days. I remember meeting lots of student ambassadors that were really friendly. The campus is really nice and green and big, so it kind of reminded me of home in Wales, um, even though it is a bit different. But it was really nice, I think, just getting to come and visit in person because then you just get the sort of like the feeling and you know either that it's the uni for you or it isn't. And in my case, it was definitely the university for me. Um, the course ranked really highly, so I was really happy with, um, with where it ranked. And I think just generally when it comes to like universities, it's really important to go in person, actually visit them, and only then can you truly sort of know whether it's like the right fit for you. It's little things like, I don't know, where buildings are, like located next to each other and um, just you know the people that you meet and transport into the city I think there's just so many things to consider when you're coming to uni and for me I found that like coming in person just really like emphasized that Nottingham was the, the uni for me. I think I didn't have very many family members that came to uni before I did so I wasn't really able to talk about like much around the day-to-day -day experience of like living away from home studying like, a completely different course to what I'd been studying at school. I think um, probably like the biggest concern I had before coming to uni was like, will I meet people? Like, I mean, it's just a new city. I didn't know anyone coming to the uni beforehand. And I think definitely 
I did, and I think something I want to like emphasise to everyone is that um, you can meet people in so many ways. So your course, your um, accommodation, societies, you can meet someone in the queue for a nightclub and they can become your best friends. So there's lots and lots of different ways that you can actually meet other people. And I think um, that's something like I wasn't 100% convinced I would be able to do. And then coming from um, like a state school, I wasn't really sure with um, some of the accommodation, whether a lot of the people maybe would be from different backgrounds, maybe some like privately educated, and like, would I be able to like, relate to those people? Um, but I think actually, I managed to find like a really good mix of people and have made friends from all different backgrounds, which is really great, especially coming from like quite a small town in Wales. It can, definitely diversity is an issue. There's not very much of it. So coming to Nottingham, being able to meet so many different people from all over the UK from different backgrounds was a really great opportunity. I think I didn't really know before coming to uni much about like the actual teaching content, so like how would I get taught. Um, so of course when you're in school you just go to class, do your class and then leave. At uni there's, a lots, there's lots of different teaching methods, so you've got a lecture um, where you're you know, taught for an hour and, well, in my case, there's 200 students in a year, so it's a very big cohort. It's a very different sort of teaching style to school. We then have workshops where you do things in smaller groups and get a bit more assistance, having like um, dedicated lab classes. Um, we also do quite a lot around um, patient consultation skills, so like actors coming in pretending to be patients. So it's just really new sort of teaching methods that I probably wasn't aware of beforehand, but I do like the variety. I think it's really... Um, like it's a really good thing to sort of shape both on your understanding of like your content and in my case like the science behind medicines but then also being able to like adapt it to communicating with the patient and just like testing lots of different skills and I think exams as well at uni so um, in school they do tend to be written exams two hours um, whereas at uni there's lots of different styles of assessment so as well as having your coursework your exams tend to be, in my case, online a lot of the time, so that's quite a difference there. And then we'll have um, OSCEs, which is sort of like consultation um, oral exams where you'll actually like, sit with um, like someone who's pretending to be a patient and practice those skills there. So that's like probably something quite different to um, education at school. I think, of course, like living independently so for 18 years of your life you will be at home with your family um, and I think coming to uni that's like such a big step because you don't have them to cook meals for you anymore to do your laundry all of these things so it's really important um, that like when you come to uni you do just try and be experimental and just go for things try new recipes um, you can always still call home if you ever do need any help when it comes to like what settings you need to put the washing machine on. But I think, yeah, there's lots of like skills around independence and making new connections and new friends that you learn at uni, which I guess like I just hadn't experienced so much um, before coming to uni. From, from my personal perspective, it's probably when I did my study abroad on the Malaysia campus, so Uni of Nottingham, Malaysia, and we went out to a hospital in Malaysia. So I think just being able to see like what a hospital looked like in another country, how it ran, how similar it was to the UK, what the differences were. I think it was really interesting. So we were um, in Malaysia, they have like government hospitals and also like um, the sort of like private ones, but we went to like a government one. So there was like a few things that I noticed about like there was quite a lot of hospital beds in one ward, um, but and also learning a bit about like with the pharmacy side of things that um, they wrote like prescriptions on just like the back of like a tissue or the back of like a receipt. So it was a bit different in that respect. So I guess just like it was quite memorable because it stood out as something so different to what I'd um, experienced in the UK. In terms of placements in the UK, um, probably like I've done a community pharmacy placement and it was the first time I was exposed to like um, patients on methadone. So methadone is where like someone comes in to collect like um, a drug to help with their drug addiction, and it sort of like replaces um, 
actually I'm not going to go into the science because I don't know it that well myself. But um, there was like an incident um, where like the patient got like aggressive and then we had to go into the back room. So it was something like quite like new for me. But I mean, the way that like the pharmacist dealt with the situation was really like um, they were very like confident but stern and I feel like they were really, they stood their ground. I think it just like showed me because I was in first year at the time like as I go through the years and as I qualify that you can be like quite confident in what you do. I feel like I was very like nervous in the situation. So for me in my first year, first semester, we created medicines from scratch. So that was in the lab session. So we made things like Calpol suspensions, we'd make creams and ointments. Um, in my second year we'd make tablets. So there's a lot of different lab classes that you do in pharmacy, but I feel like for me, the most memorable ones were probably like being able to like create products and then you go through and like label them and then afterwards you practice like handing them out to a patient and giving the counselling. So I think that was really interesting because you're able to learn about what goes inside a medication. So I'm sure you're probably aware, but it's not just like the active drug. You have lots of like extra ingredients to make sure that like, for example, if it's a liquid, the medicine flows properly. If it's a tablet, making sure that like it stays in one piece until it then um, gets absorbed and then it needs to disperse. So I think it was really interesting being able to like create medicines from scratch. Um, and there was such like a variety of like medication formulations that we made. That I think those were probably my standout practical sessions. I think so. I lived in catered accommodation in my first year. I think probably like the most memorable ones it's not like a specific thing I think it would just be like the evenings after we've all like eaten together in like the big catered dining room then just like going back to each other's rooms we would often do like um games nights and um just sort of like connect outside of like uni um sort of like course stuff because most of the people that I was in halls with they were not on my course so it was really great just to like sort of switch off from my degree and just be able to like enjoy time with friends so we would go yeah I mean we would eat together every single day because it was a catered hall so um, we'd often be like the last ones to leave the dining room and that was just like a, a running joke that we would always be the final ones to then get kicked out and then we'd just like carry on with the conversations going back to somebody's room. And I think I really loved the fact that we weren't really restricted to like our block or our flat in catered halls so because of like the nature of being able to eat in one big dining room you're then able to sort of like eat with whoever you want from whichever block in the hall and then it just meant that you could always sort of like you'd have friends from all over um but i think it's just sort of those memories that i mean i'm still friends with my friends from first year now that i'm in my final year so i think it's not like specific moments i think it's more just like the general feeling you get like when you look back and just remember like how social it was um and for me, like my time in halls, I feel like it was sort of like an upward trajectory. So you start in your freshest week, you're feeling a little bit nervous. You're maybe not too sure, like, are you finding the right people? There's a lot of like pressure to make sure that you, you know, find the right people for you, which um, it always will happen. But I think you just find that as you go on with time, you build more trust, you like build the foundations with friendships. And I think then you can just spend a lot more time with people knowing that you've got this like really solid friendship and I think that's like the probably like fondest memories that I have looking back is the time I spent with the people that I met. I think it would probably be um there's like a nice green area in the centre of campus called the Downs so especially like in the summer months when it's nice and warm you can go there have picnics or have drinks or like read a book or just like spend time with friends I feel like that's a really nice area and especially as the weather gets nicer it's just got like a really good atmosphere. It very much like feels like the university, like it's a very student-centered area with lots of people having fun. Um, when I was in first year, I did like the Harry Potter Society, only for a few sessions, but we did like Quidditch in that area where you're on like the little broomsticks and running around like a maniac. So my friends and I like love, love doing escape rooms. So I'd say probably that. Um, so there's quite a few different ones in Nottingham. They've got some that are actually like within the caves because um, that's sort of like the way they built it so that like you can go into the caves through the room. I feel like they're really interesting and obviously like really um, like 
make you sort of cohesive as a group because I feel like you're all working together and they're really creative and I just feel like it's something that I hadn't done before coming to uni and I know they have them in lots of cities but I just feel like from what I've heard from all my friends that have done them in different cities like Nottingham's got one of the the best ones I think there's one room that's called like the Butcher which is the only 18 plus rated escape room in the UK and you need a safe word because otherwise um, yeah, it gets quite scary, as you can probably imagine, by the title of The Butcher. Um, so I think just like that would probably be something that I would choose to do for fun because it's with a nice group of people and yeah, the rooms are quite creative. I'd say the best thing about living at uni is you make the decisions, so like everything that you do is all like, um, you know, your choice, which is really can be quite fun. I mean, again, you develop loads of independence at university. So um, I felt like I didn't really cook that much when I was at home. So now being able to like cook what I want, when I want is really fun. Um, and I think just like being surrounded by lots of other young people, um, all in like similar phases of their life to you. And um, you all sort of like share the same concerns, but also like you share all the same highlights. And I think then when it comes to things like um, you know, the scary future. So looking for jobs and things like that, you're all sort of in the same boat. So it's quite nice to be able to like relate to lots of other young people. Um, and then I just quite like living at Nottingham because I feel like it's like the campus is just so nice and green. So you're able to go there if you just want like a nice walk. Um, and I feel like that city centre has got quite a lot to it. So um, especially now like post pandemic or like kind of post-pandemic. Um, there's lots of bars, lots of clubs. Some of the clubs are student only as well, which is really nice because then you feel even safer in those. Um, but I feel like just being able to, yeah, live with people your own age and just, you know, do what you want to do when you want to do it. Um, you've got no parents telling you, no, 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 this is your like home time. You've got to be in by this point. You can make that up for yourself. So probably that. So I think with Nottingham, it's quite nice because it's a campus-based university, whereas some of the other universities are like city. So I think one of the benefits of having like the campus and such a big campus is that you know that it's lots of other students um, surrounding you all at the same time. So um, it's just quite like a nice feeling. Sometimes you'll bump into people on campus. Um, and I think as well with Nottingham, they've got such a big range of societies. So there's over 200 societies. 80 sports so I feel like especially during your first few years you can sort of try a bit of everything and if the society doesn't exist then you can always create one so I think just the like vast array of societies on offer is really really a selling point for Nottingham the sort of like city is really well located so you can sort of like travel around to lots of places very easily the train station is really accessible probably as well like with Nottingham the fact that like the accommodation um, in first year was just so nice that like the buildings are really grand. Then you've got a nice mix of like the traditional side of the campus, but there's also quite a few modern buildings. I think there's quite a lot on offer at the uni and I'd say that's probably, yeah, why uni of Nottingham for me. And the study abroad opportunities as well. So um, having like a campus in University of, Mal university of Nottingham, Malaysia, and then University of Nottingham, China, I think it's just a really, really great opportunity to get to experience your degree internationally. And I think that's quite unique to Nottingham. So I was able to go to the Malaysia campus, which I really loved. And um, I spent yeah, my whole second year there. And it's like a campus just about like 45 minutes away from Kuala Lumpur, the capital city. And I feel like being able to like go to the University of Nottingham, but in Malaysia, you still use the same website to um, access your lectures. You feel like there's like, it's a home from home. So some of the buildings are quite similar. And then of course, like all the travel opportunities in Southeast Asia, I think being able to experience university abroad really helps sort of just widen your knowledge on perspectives on a lot of things and meeting new people, learning about new cultures. So I'd say that's probably one of the big pluses to University of Nottingham. I think one of the best things about studying pharmacy is just being able to 
I think just learn about like how does a drug work inside your body. So there's a lot of science that you will cover. So it's things like how does it bind to different cells in your body, and then like the formulation of medicines. So looking at like um, how stable is it in certain conditions, and then just like the journey that you go on. So you start from like a small molecule that's just like a drug molecule that they will be testing, and then you sort of like expand on that. And by the end, it's a medicine that is then given to a patient. And I think from my perspective, I just love the communication aspect of the course of so being able to have lots of exams where you're tested on those communication skills. So it's not just like recalling every bit of information and then blurting it out. With pharmacy generally, I feel like it's, a, um, it's quite like a social degree. So there's lots of ways that you can really get stuck involved, um, both like within the degree, but also like outside of the degree. So I'm part of, um, the British Pharmacy School Students Association and also like the International Pharmacy School Students Federation. So being able to have those opportunities where you've kind of got like a students association across the UK and also internationally, it just means that you get so many opportunities to meet people, not just within your uni, but also across the UK and across the world. So I think it's a really great profession in that respect. And then often, you know, as you start attending events like this you can meet lots of people that are within the same profession and then that can help you with your career but also just getting to meet new people I think it's like a really great thing to get to do I'd say as well just the focus on like person-centered care so everything you do you're making sure that you put like your patient at the forefront of your practice I think it's quite nice for me it's the reason why I ended up not going with a straight science course which was like purely biology or purely chemistry because I like the element of being able to refer to like make sure that all science that you're learning gets brought back to a person. We also do some like veterinary prescriptions so it's also animals um, but yeah majority like person. For me just with most if I just have any concerns I tend to go to my um, personal tutor as like a first point of contact so that's someone where you're allocated a teacher at the beginning of your course and then they're through and they stay with you right until when you graduate. So I think um, we have really regular meetings and sometimes we also get to like walk around the lake together just to discuss like whether it's anything from like exam results to maybe like slightly more personal issues. I think that would be like my, me personally, my like go-to support. Um, and so she's sort of like, like a middle-aged woman but I sort of see her as like a mother figure so it's quite nice um, getting to um, have nice like conversations with her but then we also have like group tutorials where we can get support from each other so the students plus the tutor so you just like bounce off of each other and if there's something that maybe I know a bit more about and somebody else knows slightly less on we're able to help support each other that way and then you often get a lot of support from your friends because and especially housemates, they're with you, you know, most hours in the day. So if like things do come up at university, being able to turn to other people that maybe are on the same course as you or in the same society as you, um, they sort of like know the details and know the ins and outs of your situation. So then you can go and talk to them. And then I haven't used it personally, but I do have friends that have used like the university counselling system. So the like wellbeing support is available you just have to like reach out if you think you need it potentially i would say so it's like um my like the head of like teaching and learning within my course so like her name's helen boardman and i feel like um she really sort of like does a lot of work around equality diversity and inclusion within the curriculum she actually um started a it was called like a student co-design project where um there were six of us students from different backgrounds, different year groups, and we actually worked on developing the new pharmacy curriculum for September 2022 um, students. So I feel like she sort of like led that really well. And there was lots of things that I felt that she was able to sort of like um, help like as explore. So there was lots of different things within the course, such as learning about um, skin conditions on different skin tones. A lot of the time you see it just on white skin. So being able to like implement more of that within the degree and then 
looking at like mental health within the university, um, inclusion of more placements because of course of placements you then get opportunities to network and learn more about the profession and I feel like um, as she sort of like specialises with like law and ethics I feel like a lot of the things that she does is always like very like ethically sound and I really like that that she sort of like gives that collaboration between students and staff so it's making sure that the degree that future generations will be studying is one that's like delivered or one that was designed by both the students and the staff so that we get those different perspectives and bring them together and I think um, I like the fact that she sort of like founded that scheme and it's now we've had lots of opportunities the group of us to present this to for example like the university executive board and lots of other big conferences so that this is something that then will hopefully like trickle through lots of the other courses and lots of the things that really matter to students will get heard because it's like it's all well and good like having like a survey but I feel like having something like this where you can just dissect a degree um, is really interesting and definitely will like benefit a lot of people in the future. At uni I've been a part of quite a few different societies some of which I do like I try a few sessions sort of try out see if I like it and if I don't other ones I've continued with from the start of my degree through until when I've ended. So for myself, the ones that I've spent the most time in is um, FarmSoc, so the pharmacy society where you put on lots of different events um, throughout the different, well, the different stages of your degree. So there'll be talks from different people within the industry. There'll be lots of socials to get to um, socialize with people on the course outside of lectures. Um, so I'd say like FarmSoc was a big one because it's like the course-based society so a lot of the time when you go to university you will join a society for your course and then get to um, do things like balls and boat parties with the people on your course outside of your degree and then I'm part of FabSoc so FabSoc is a um, sort of charity where you take um, young people with disabilities on trips around the UK so I've been a member of FabSoc since my first year and we've been on trips um, to places like Olsen Towers, Cadbury's World and the zoo, aquariums. So there's quite a few different trips that you get to go on and you get partnered with um, a young person with a disability and then um, sort of like shape their day. So it's really great like to give respite to the parents and also just to be able to help like some young people and really enjoy their day and of course like having disabilities can be quite difficult so getting to sort of like be in a society like this where they feel normal and they're able to just sort of enjoy their day with lots of other like young people and um, because like us as students they can often relate to them I think that's a really rewarding society to be in and um, I also volunteer at a food bank so again getting to help people that um, maybe like wouldn't be able to afford meals otherwise. I think especially in these pandemic times, I've managed to like grow quite a lot as a person because I'd never really had much um, like customer facing experience and like dealing with things like opening a shop and like pulling up the shutters in the morning for, through to like, you know, cleaning up when it's closed. And just, I think like the big, big joy out of that one is just when you get like a really sincere thank you to someone. A lot of people would just be like, oh, cheers, thank you. But like getting that sort of big, like, you know, I really appreciate what you're doing, I think is a really nice feeling. Um, and you know that like what you're doing, because it's all volunteering, so you don't get paid to do it. I think that's a um, really great opportunity and I've really enjoyed that. When I was in Malaysia on my study abroad, I was part of um, the Radio Society, so getting to have like our own sort of like podcast style thing there. Um, and mine was around like healthcare and sustainability but there was lots of different ones around different themes. I think that was a really great opportunity to like work in sort of like a different industry to something that I'd done before. And I think it was quite fun like seeing the behind the scenes of like how to like set these things up because we founded the society. So that was really interesting. I used to go swimming in Malaysia. So that'd be like twice a week before my 9am classes. Um, so lots and lots of like sports on offer at the Uni of Nottingham and also Uni of Nottingham, Malaysia, with the swimming, you didn't have to get a gym pass, it was free to go, you just paid like a four pounds membership fee. So that was really interesting. And then the ones that I've sort of like dipped my toes into, but not like 
stuck with is um, I did like rollerblading for a bit, so that's really interesting. So in Nottingham, you go to like car parks and then just like practice your skills. And if you're good enough, you can go around the streets of Nottingham. I was not good enough to do that. So I just stuck to the car parks with my knee pads and that kind of thing. So I think in terms of what I've discovered about myself at uni, it's probably just like confidence in like knowing where I want to go in life. So I often will make decisions fully knowing myself and therefore like I know what I enjoy, I know what I don't enjoy. I think I don't really like fall into any kind of like peer pressure anymore. I think if I want to do something I will and if I don't then I won't and just not feeling like guilty for saying no sometimes. I mean I have noticed that I do tend to be a very like yes person. I will say yes to a lot of things and I think there's like no problems with that but just knowing like that I do have like limits. So I'd definitely say as well that uni have just like sparked my passion for like um, international experiences and just getting to travel across the world. Um, before coming to uni I'd never really been abroad like once or twice on like a school trip but um, since then I've done things like interrailing and I think like having done the study abroad as well that really sparked that interest. And then I think as well at university I've definitely been able to like explore my sexuality as well so like I think like coming out at university was quite interesting and just like being able to be supported by lots of other young people was a really interesting experience to um, sort of share that and have other people sort of like coming out at the same time. So I think university definitely like opens your eyes to um, lots of different people from all over the world but you all maybe like going through similar things like that and I think the sort of like um, supportive environment that there is at the university is quite um, it's quite nice because then you don't feel like it's such a big thing and it isn't a big thing at all but just like being able to just sort of like slip it into conversations and it just doesn't feel so major whereas like maybe in school it would be a lot more of like a talking point. I feel like at university it's just a given that there's lots of people with different sexualities. I mean there'll also be people with like different religions, different gender identities and I think being able to um, sort of like explore that side of me and um, at university has been quite a big one. I think at university, I mean, the biggest one for me is just like communicating, communicating confidently. So, for example, if you're sat in a meeting or if you're in sort of any given situation, just like being able to know that you can like convey your ideas and your messages confidently and anything that you sort of think is valid. So I think being able to get that understanding of like, when you like are in a meeting, even if it's with people that are technically like higher up than you in like the power sort of like dynamics, I think knowing that like your opinion is valid and it's actually useful because you bring a really unique perspective to any conversation because you're the only person that's lived your life and gone through the experiences that you have. So I think I've definitely like learned to like hold my ground in most of like situations like that. Um, I think employability as well at university, so of course being able to get lots of different um, skills that you can then transfer into a future job. So um, with pharmacy these will range from like, you know, communication to leadership to um, teamwork. Um, you also develop lots of like digital skills whilst at university, especially given the pandemic, a lot of things have gone online. So being able to become adaptable. I think all of these things have been um, things that I've like, not necessarily like learned at university, but definitely like developed at university because of course like, I was able to communicate beforehand, but you just, you can communicate in different settings with different people. Um, and just like that sort of like awareness for like the different backgrounds that everyone comes from. I feel like that is a really big one at university because you do just meet so many different people with so many different perspectives. You learn so many things. I think like that sort of just like becomes like infused into some of the work that you you will just do in the future. Like you'll be a lot more aware of things like equality, diversity, and inclusion within the workplace, and just like trying to combat that. It's things that like you may have been like aware of in school, but I feel like at university it just becomes like a given that like it's something that you have to try and combat. You have to balance the inequalities and do what you can. And I think like the uni experience gave me the tools to do that. The one that probably like 
every student can relate to is just like exam periods and assessments. So it feels like all encompassing at that moment in time, but then actually um, it isn't. And as well, just like understanding now that like your grades and your marks, they don't define who you are. I mean, of course you can um, do really well and you can do quite badly in your degree, but like that doesn't shape who you are as a person. But I think just being able to like work together with course mates on assessments, not of course like plagiarizing or anything, but just being able to like support each other and like share information. I think that's quite a, a nice aspect of studying at university is you've got a nice network of people. And I think, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't have any like major, major struggle but it would just be like, the, of course, like during exam period, it can be quite intense. So you have to make sure that you get that balance between like working well, but like also working like smartly. So it's not necessarily working longer hours, but like doing things that are a bit more um, sort of like productive, which is like very like, um, it's like a word that's like thrown out there a lot and there's lots of different meanings to it. But I think for me, just being able to like section and timetable, like when I'm working, when I'm not, um, I'm not perfect at it because like, I feel like sometimes it is quite difficult to switch on and then equally sometimes it can be quite difficult to switch back on, uh, off again on all of those things. So um, yeah, I would say just being able to um, know that like all ex exam periods and assessments, like they will come to an end and then you've got something to look forward to afterwards. Um, but in terms of support networks during exam period, it would for me personally mostly be friends on my course who are studying the same degree because again you can all relate and you all know that you're going through the same thing um, so yeah that would probably be it for me but no real major struggles. I think for me my future initial so short-term future is I'm graduating this summer um, I plan to travel as soon as I graduate like over the summer months and then I'll start working in West Kensington in London in like a GP and community pharmacy split placement. So that's my like training year. So I have one year to become a pharmacist and then um, at the end of that year I'll sit an exam and hopefully pass it and then I'll hopefully become a um, registered pharmacist. From there um, that then I could probably take um, globally but I can certainly take them nationally it sort of depends on the country but I see myself probably staying in London for maybe like two or three years just because um, it's quite different to um, like life in my hometown in Wales so I think I'd just quite like to experience what that's like um, and then from there I mean I'm, I'm not sure I mean I would love to work abroad at some point um, definitely like within some element of like global pharmacy um, I would yeah I mean I'm not set on like staying in one place so I'm happy to like sort of travel and um, like move around different places especially during my 20s and I think like the important thing about the future is like I don't even know what I'm having for breakfast tomorrow so like being able to plan something quite far into the future um, it's not something like that will always like, you know, you might have an image of like what direction you'll go into. But for me, I think it's really important to be flexible, be fluid and just be able to understand that, you know, there's lots of careers that will just pop up in the future that maybe didn't even exist when we were, like when we were children or even now. So I think just being open-minded to life could take you in any direction. Um, and that's sort of like me. So I've not really got much of a, a set plan because I feel like life is unpredictable so you just go where where the road takes you. <laughs> I think for me personally of course like the degree means a lot because it then means you can sort of like hit the next step in the stepping stones so like um, it's the same as sort of like GCSEs then get you onto A levels, A levels then get you into a degree, a degree can then get you into a career but I think the degree itself, like getting that certificate isn't like the most important thing to me because at the end of the day, like just getting that certificate is like a, it's just one moment. I think for me, like it represents like four years of memories and four years of meeting people and experiences. But 
I think for me personally, that's what I'm going to look back on mostly is like the memories that I've had at university. Of course, like the skills that I've developed and I've met so many people through my course and then across like the UK and internationally. But I think for me, like the degree classification I get, as long as it's like not too bad, then I'm quite happy and I just see it as something that can get me to the next step. Whilst I'm young and in good health, I just love to like travel the world and experience all the um, the countries that I've never been to and just learn about so many different cultures. Um, I would enjoy like also working in like healthcare settings globally because I think there's so many parts of the world where they're in desperate need for healthcare. I mean, you look at like um, situations going on in the world right now. I think like the skills that like I would have, I'd be able to like bring that into a lot of different settings where it would really like help change people's lives. But I think for me, I just yeah, I love the sort of like global side of, of things, like just being able to like connect with so many different people from different walks of life. Um, so like if there was no barriers right now, it would probably be like traveling the world um, with friends as well, because I think, um, I mean, I. I'm very confident like I will do solo traveling here and there but I feel like if you can like share the moment with people that you're really close to I would say that that's definitely probably like that would be like the added dream